What's going on guys? So today we are out here at Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Corpus Christi, Texas, taking a look at this brand new Rogue by Forest River. This is actually a conventional towable toy hauler. Very, very cool, but I think you're gonna like this video. Hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so before we go any further, let's take a look at the numbers on this unit, which will probably be pretty high. So this has an 11,575 pound gross vehicle weight rating. It has a 3,247 pound cargo capacity, rides on twin 5,100 pound axles, 15 inch E-rated tires. So the specs are here to be able to support what it carries. Stepping back, you can see it has a very cool Schwintech slide kind of trimmed off in an aluminum sheeting right there. Coming around this way, you're gonna have some storage on this side. You have two entry exits on this unit and a big window right there. Anyways, let's take a look inside of this unit first and then we'll come back out and take a look at the outside. So this is the 29KS Rogue by Forest River. You have the Moride step above steps right here with Rogue cut out. Stepping inside. So here is the toy hauler section. And real quick, the axles are right here. So the axles are gonna be right underneath this space right here, which means anything you load in this unit will be balanced towards the back. So just keep that in mind, which means they've likely made the front of this unit extra heavy or whenever you don't have, I'm sorry, any toys in the back to counterweight it. So you're probably gonna see a really high front tongue weight when it's completely unloaded from the back. But then when you throw whatever you throw in the back, whether it's a couple Harleys or something like that, you're gonna see the weight come off of your truck. So you definitely wanna be very careful how you balance a unit out like this. You can see all the D-rings already in place on the floor to secure whatever you load back here. Has the little elevated bed system, which can drop down. So you have essentially a queen size bed up here, and these can fold out into a queen size bed or fold up into chairs like this, giving you a space for this table to go in between so you can use it as your dinette. This back ramp will drop down so you can use it as a ramp and it turns into a back patio as well. This is the gate. So once it drops down, this all folds out and surrounds it with a really nice patio space. You can see how your windows black out right here because they don't want to take up too much room inside. They don't put balances right here and this simply covers up with this really nice blackout piece of looks like nylon. Looking at this side, you can see it uses the zebra blinds, which are really cool. So basically you just align everything like this and it does a reasonable job blocking out most of the light. Not all of the light, but a little bit more than if you just had the standard blinds. You can see the zebra blinds over there as well. You have a nice little bed right here and this is a jackknife bed. So you'll simply fold this out like this and it will fold down. Let's see if we can do this in real time. So there is a place for sleeping. Over here you have all your controls. As we come into the kitchen space, you have all your cabinets here. You have a Norcold gas electric refrigerator. Here's your kitchen space and there's quite a bit of countertop space in here. I'm actually pretty surprised. Coffee station would go right there for me. And here you have a nice large single basin sink area. Hand sanitizer station, it's interesting, or soap. And then you have your faucet right there, your drawers. There is no cabinet underneath here though. And you'd have to unscrew that to access the plumbing under there. You have more cabinets up top. You have your small microwave up here as well. No backsplash back here as well. I would have expected to see some type of a backsplash. But this does have the TST uh, TPMS monitoring system in place, which is nice. Here's your pantry storage in here. And this wall right here is all on a slide. It's what I showed you when I was walking around showing the numbers. And stepping back here is likely your bathroom. So yep, so you have a cornered shower. You have a porcelain foot flush toilet, which is really nice. Space for toiletries, towels and such. Nice large medicine cabinet. Small little sink right here, but it's not bad at all. It's definitely enough for this type of floor plan. Let's just go right here to get straight to the bedroom. All right, 
so here is your second entry exit. Plenty of room around the bed, and this is a king size bed. So that's actually kind of shocking. And the reason why it fits so well in here is because this is on 101 wide inch body. So you actually have a wider floor plan in this unit because of it being a toy hauler. So you have quite a bit of room over here, and then you also have quite a bit of room over here. Plus you have some more wardrobe storage over here. You have some more above, and this is very tall. So you don't have to worry about hitting your head up there. At least most people don't. You can connect your TV and everything right here. This is your backer for the TV. More wardrobe space. This is USB connections right here. Very, very cool setup. Oh, a couple little towel holders that I had missed before. What do you guys think of a unit like this? I mean, when you look at the payload capacity, you look at what you can carry, keep in mind, only a percentage of that is gonna be dedicated for this space back here because you're likely gonna have stuff up front and you're gonna want room for that as well. So you don't wanna just believe that all your payload capacity should be back here with your toys when in fact maybe half of it should be back here. So figure what your weight is, make sure that you balance a unit out like this really well before you just start loading everything in the back. Anyways, let's step outside. Let's take a look at the outside of this unit. All right, so I like these really high gloss doors. That's really nice. You can see this huge awning that runs across, you know, I'd say about 80% of the roof line. Looking up here, this runs Castle Rock ST tires. I would upgrade those relatively soon. Not a big fan of those. You have a non-suspension equalizer in between. Something else I would also recommend upgrading. Hey, these wheels are the same wheels that I have on my cargo trailer. Pretty nice. All right, just taking a look further around fuel dispensing station so this is kind of interesting on most toy haulers your fueling station is on the other side but this one's all on this side which is interesting plus you have a leash latch right here and you also have one up front if you want to leash your dog up to the side of your rv it has manual scissor style stabilizers down here as well has all led lighting and here's your back ramp door it's not only wired for a Furion backup camera, but it has a Furion backup camera already installed. It has an LED scene light over here. I do kind of wish that they would have put two of them on, but I don't know. Depends on how bright it is, I suppose. Coming around this way, you have your ventilation for ventilating air coming in and out of the back whenever you're going down the road. Does not have frameless windows. You have a 30 amp connection here, which means it's only gonna have one air conditioning unit. This slide is on a Schwintec slide mechanism. Coming around further to the front, this is where your sewer connections all terminate to, and you have end valves at the very end. Kind of common on travel trailers though. This is where your water connections are, plus you have a spray port connection right here, an outside shower. So this has the new Yamaha powered generator on board, which is really nice. You know, typically when I've seen these generators in here, this door right here is ventilated, but I guess they don't need to anymore. And it's ventilated at the bottom. So if you look underneath this unit, you'll actually see how the air comes in and it comes out through the exhaust right here. But I've heard good things about these inverter Yamaha power generators. There's the outside of your water heater. Anyways, what do you guys think about a unit like this? I know a lot of folks look for this type of unit. I would absolutely recommend towing something like this with either a properly specced out three quarter ton truck all the way up to a one ton dually just for the stability, just to be able to manage the extra height, the extra width and weight of a unit like this, especially if you're towing heavy toys in the back. And you can just see how much taller and larger it is than this Jayco unit directly beside it. So when you compare the two side by side, this Rogue just looks massive compared to this Jayco unit. And there's a lot to be said about towing something like this with the properly equipped, properly specced out and sized tow vehicle. So just keep that in mind. MSRP on this unit's a hair over $70,000. You're likely to get a, a nice chunk taken off of that in terms of sales price. So you definitely wanna call the folks at Ron Hoover if this is something you may be interested in. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll be back to talk to you again real soon.